Every time I look at this bike, I'm in awe of it, man. I want to ride it, and we have a ride coming up. The RTO here in Telangana won't send the uh, permanent registration number plates uh, to a TR that's done outside the state. The only accessory that I was able to fit last time was this one. The threading inside that screw hole is gone. I think some of you might still have that question: How he was able to afford such an expensive bike? So that's a discount of almost 3.75 lakhs. The reason my bike's under cover is because of this. You see the sun and the sweat. It's June 20th, guys, and temperature of 33, 34 degrees right now. <laughs> I don't understand where the monsoons are, man. I hear they're away by three, four days, but this is unprecedented. In my vague memory, I don't think this has ever happened in the last 20, 25 years here in Hyderabad. Definitely some global warming issues, but either way. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are, and when you're watching this, welcome to a new vlog. In case some of you are wondering what this newspaper is. This is Jugad to cover this section where the usual MCB switches and all are the power switches. The power box is located. Some flies are creating a nest here, so I'm trying to block it so that at least they'll find a new space. They were not harmful, but they're just blocking the wiring and all, and it's kind of getting a bit messy. So I wanted to cover this, but then I thought this is a easier and simpler way. We'll take it off uh, once the rain starts and see if it changes. Otherwise, we might have to permanently block it with like a door or something. And talking about Jugads, if you've been following my videos, you'd know that I messed up uh, a DIY accessory installation on the Ducati. Yes, I was in no mood to do continue the video after uh, ending that bit uh, late in the night. Let me show you the bike and the status of it so that you get an idea. By the way, I'm just using this as a placeholder on the seat so that cats don't go in. And if you're wondering what's in there, that's another bike cover similar to this. I had two bikes, right? So I had one extra spare cover. One needs to be very careful while removing the covers because. You see clips like these can scratch up your tank and all. Luckily, we the bike's covered by PPF. Whew. Every time I look at this bike, I'm in awe of it, man. I want to ride it, and we have a ride coming up. And in case some of you are wondering, where's the number plate? It's gonna come. The TR number plate was the Maharashtra one. I didn't want it here, so the registration process and all are done, and the number is assigned. I'll install it in a day or two. I can't get the official Telangana number plates because, as per the agent, the RTO here in Telangana won't send the uh, permanent registration number plates uh, to a TR that's done outside the state. So yeah. That's one uh, genuine reason I can have a random third-party number plate. The only accessory that I was able to fit last time was this one, the beautiful rare swing arm protector. On the other side, it looks like a regular fork protector, but on this side, it looks lovely, man. The main part that didn't work is this one. This is the clip that was used, and that's the. Screw hole. The threading inside that screw hole is gone. The bolt which was stuck inside was literally churned into metal dust, so that the entire sl uh, slot is empty. But I can't use that uh, hole anymore to install the center stand. So it needs to be re-threaded. And the way they re-threaded it is apparently, I need to take it to a lathe machine guys, and they'll use a stainless steel sleeve inside that screw hole. First clean it up, and then use the sleeve and uh, re-thread it as per the dimensions of the screw which goes in. So just waiting for that screw to arrive, and it's what a thousand rupee screw, but that delayed and literally screwed up my entire uh, DIY accessory installation. So whenever you're screwing something into an aluminium bracket or a sleeve or something, just be extremely careful. Stainless steel is a harder metal than aluminium, but that's the lesson I learned. I'm not gonna give up on DIYs. I'm still gonna do them, which whenever I think that's easily doable. For complicated ones like the center stand springs and all, I'll get it done at the showroom. Probably better to learn on smaller bikes like the RC 390 or something, and then take it up on bigger ones. That's a say in a way of doing it, but you'll only learn on the process, right? Also, some of the accessories that I was trying to install in the last video from Bike and Biker didn't fit, so they were sent back, and I'm waiting for the new parts to come. We're gonna get few more accessories, and there are a lot of tours planned on this bike, so stay tuned and make sure to click that subscribe button and the bell icon for instant notifications because it's gonna be an exciting content, man. I'm super stoked. about it i'm preparing for that but in this video i'm going to explain you how i purchased this bike because i think some of you might still have that question how he was able to afford such an expensive bike this costed me almost 34 lakhs and that's a lot of money typically when people purchase bikes they have a purpose in mind and then they have a budget in mind and then select options from there but in my case i have experienced all kinds of bikes and all kinds of terrains and i wanted something more desirable out of all these options panigale v4s was the easiest 
in terms of that desirability factor but it's not practical the budget was too high yes even for me one might think that i have spent almost 35 lakhs now and that panagara v4s is just 5 lakhs more but getting to 35 costed me two bikes and a huge loan so in that regard pushing that for a bike that i would probably very rarely use just didn't make sense. Super sports or sports bikes were ruled out. The other options that were left are the Street Fighter V4S and the Multistrada. Multistrada made there are multiple options. Street Fighter V4S was slightly more practical compared to a Panigale, but it would still get too hot in the city. I would have to literally ride it in night uh, when there is no one around. It would have not taken any traffic. So finally, the only option that was left was the Multistrada. Now, some people might think Multistrada is an ADV. I can start considering 1250 GS or the upcoming 1300. But I was bored of seeing the GSS in the group and in, in everywhere, in every location that you go. I wanted something different. I want something more fun and sporty. So in that regard, Multistrada was the one. But which Multistrada was also another complicated choice. Multistrada, may we have the basic V4, which can be like the perfect ADV can do most of the jobs that the V4S does. It's just that you won't get electronic suspension, the big 6.5 inch touchscreen and also the radar. You don't need that in India, but at the end of the day, it's good to have if you can afford. But I didn't consider the regular V4 or the V4S because it felt like a regular ADV. I wanted something different than what I had till now. The other options were the V4S Alley, which is an out and out uh, globe trotter. I have no ambitions of doing any world rides. I'm not saying I won't do, but right now there are no ambitions. Even though rally was so desirable with its new aluminum tank, the extended range, the comfort that uh, the rally comes with. In that sense, it was like the perfect ADV one can buy right now in the market, but it's just that it's again an ADP. So Pikes Peak was the option and the Ducati India deal right now, I think it's still there where they are offering four lakhs in accessories on the Multistrada and on the Street Fighter and on the V2s they're offering I think two lakhs. If you are in the market to buy a Ducati, please definitely check with your nearest dealer if they have any stock. Make full use of that offer because you don't get such discounts on Ducatis ever. And they're at the top of the line. Anyway, let's come back to the point of how I purchased this bike. Now that we have decided it's the Multistrada V4 Pike Speak Edition, which retails for roughly 31 lakhs, 48,000. That's the extra room price. On road, this would typically cost 1.2 times. So that's almost equivalent to 37.75 lakhs. However, Ducati India announced this offer of 4 lakhs of free accessories on purchase of a Multistrada. This applied for the Pike Speak 2 or depending on the dealer, some dealers were able to give direct cash discount and I got 3 lakhs of cash discount. My bike price instantly became 28 lakhs 48,000. So when you make it 1.2 times, my on-road price became almost 34 lakhs. So that's a discount of almost 3.75 lakhs. But one small correction here is that I had to still pay the life tax on the original ex showroom price, not on the discounted one. So in that regard, I had to pay almost like 45,000 extra. So the net discount, including agent fees and all, was roughly 3.25 lakhs. I had uh, 75,000 in accessories. So total was almost 35 lakhs. And how did I get these 35? Both my bikes gave me 20 lakhs, applied a loan of 12 lakhs, and the remaining three lakhs is what I had in savings. That's how I was able to afford 35 lakhs for this bike. Simple math, but at the end of the day, instead of two bikes, I kept one bike. If you consider the original MRP price for both my bikes, I think the 850GS was on road 16 and the Scrambler 1100 was around 13. So roughly both combined, it costed me 29 lakhs then. So I was getting 20 after using them for what, almost five, four years. In that regard, I think it's a good deal that I got, but at the same time, this is still an expensive purchase. So I wouldn't recommend this option or route for everyone. Think about your finances. I'm able to manage this. I still need to figure out a few things for in terms of the monthly EMIs and all. It's going to be only from the income that I generate for my own, nothing to be disturbed on the fi family finances. Whatever I earn is what I'm spending on the bikes. And that's the lifestyle I chose. You don't need to choose this lifestyle. Anyway, that's a brief glimpse of uh, how I financed or purchased this motorcycle. That's it for today's video, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you think in the comment section. And in case you're watching this night time, have a good day and take care. Bye-bye.